before I start on the demo, let's do a quick recap of what we're going to see as a process. So I'm going to create the purchase order and I'm going to put a subcontracting item in that purchase order. Next I'll create a delivery using the transaction ME2O and I'm going to do the standard picking, packing and PGI. Once this is done, I'll, we will look at the inventory and we'll see how for this inventory, while still in stock, has changed status. So there'll be a status change for that material. I'll then do the goods receipt and after that we'll again have a look at the inventory uh, and we'll have a look how the status has changed again and there will be a reduction or consumption of the material and an increase of the receipt material into stock so the consume A increase of B. Just to close the process also note that we'll post the invoice and the invoice will be cleared. Now the invoice will always be for the amount of work done or the service that's been added to the material rather than the total cost of the material itself. Now given that this is the supply chain or logistics part of the video I am not going to post the invoice but just be aware that it is part of the subcontracting process. So let's start by creating a purchase order. I'm going to use the standard order creation ME21N. I'm going to use the normal purchase order document type NB. I'm going to use uh, a standard vendor. I'm going to put in the purchasing organization and the company code. I put in a standard material here. I put in my purchase quantity and I put in the purchasing group. So, so far oh, I'm going to put the plant in here and I'm going to put the net price. So, so far so good. Everything looks normal. It looks like a standard purchase order to purchase the material from the vendor. Now watch what happens when I change the item category to L which and this now becomes a subcontracting order and the first thing you see is if I go to the tab here we now have a subcontracting tab and this special stock says where should I when I issue the stock to the vendor where should I take the stock from? Should I take it from quality? Should I take it from normal stock? And so forth. So let's leave it at normal stock and if we now go to the tab let me just say material data you would see this little icon that says components and when I press this button it will then bring me to a new screen that shows the material that I want to send to the vendor uh, with the quantity and the material that I expect back from the vendor after it's been processed. So let me go ahead and press this button so you can see. In this screen you see the material that we, we the vendor is supposed to return back to us and this component material is what we have to send to the vendor for processing along with the quantities. When we have a look at the material master bomb we'll look at how those ratios are calculated but for now just understand that this screen shows what we have to send to the vendor and what we expect the vendor to send back to us. So now let's go back and I'm going to save this document and oops there we go and double click and here's the purchase order number I'm going to record it so that we have a reference later on. So the purchase order has been created the next step is to actually create the delivery. So let's use the transaction ME20. This is a transaction to create the subcontracting order. I've put in the vendor and the plant and execute. As you can see here the system has only found one purchase order and I'm now going to go ahead and press the delivery create button. The system will now show this pop-up asking you to confirm actually three things the storage location the batch and the quantity that you want to create in the delivery so let me say yes and 
the delivery has been created in the background. Let me copy this delivery now and let's go back let's go into the delivery and start processing it. So I'm going to run the transaction VL02N which is the transaction to display delivery I put my delivery number in and as you can see here this is the delivery for subcontracting it's as normal you have the item line you have the quantity and notice that the material that we want to send to the vendor ends with a 7-3 remember what we said before in the purchase order we want the material or we want the vendor to give us the material ending with 7-2 and in the component screen we had to send the material ending with 7-3 to the vendor let's go to the item line and if we go to the picking you can see that it still needs to be picked via transfer order which I'll create it's a one-step transfer order so once I create it it's confirmed in the background if you go back to the delivery you can now see that the status says it's been fully picked and it's ready to be PGI'd before I start doing the PGI before I do the goods issue let's have a look at the stock status for material ending 73 so here's the material here I execute and as we can see there's a quantity of 100 in this storage location in the plant so everything looks fine let's go back to VL02N I now do the post goods issue and after this let's have a look at the document flow to make sure that a material movement has happened and as you can see here the material movement has happened but it's not the standard 601 that we usually see it's actually a goods movement that's changed the status of that material and we can see this by using MMBE again for that material 73 ending 73 if we now look at the stock status of this material let's execute and now notice how we have 50 in stock that's in the vendor site here and then we have 50 in stock in the plant what this means or what this is showing is that while we have 50 still f in our books that we legally own the location of that material is with the vendor and this f this reflects what we've seen before the material is always in our ownership but in this case 50 is on the vendor's site so now let's receive the material back from the vendor using the MyGo transaction and I'm going to receive it against the purchase order here but before we do let's have a look at the stock status one last time to be clear where we are so I'm going to use the transaction MMBE and let's look at the stock status for material 72 which is our parent item so as you can see here we have 50 on order stock which means that we have 50 coming in and it's been ordered ie it's on a purchase order it's waiting to arrive in the plant but it's not in the factory yet it's not in a storage location it's not in unrestricted status so now let's look at the child item that we sent to the vendor and as you can see here there's 50 on the vendor site so let's now receive the, the material as you can see here the system wants to receive 72 so I'm going to explode the components here and what it says is when you receive 72 you're going to consume 73 so I'm going to flag the box that says item OK here and here's the stock status let's just one last time and we see here that's 50 on on order so let's do the goods issue post the document and as you can see here the material has been posted so the stock now has changed so now let's go back to the stock status MMBE and look at material 72 I'm just take out the storage location so we see for the whole plant and now you see that the unrestricted status is has 50 it, so it's moved from on order stock to a status of 50 in unrestricted 
If we now go to the child item, ending with the 7.3, now, as you can see here for material 7.3, the, the, the quantity of 50 at the vendor has vanished. So what this shows is that when we did the, when we posted the document, 50 increased uh, of material 7.2 and the 50 that was at the vendor for material 7.3 was consumed.